What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome to this devotional series. Uh, we're still in the book of Mark, but we are on the home stretch here. This is it. We're in Mark chapter 15. Mark only has 16 chapters, and so I'd encourage you to pause and read it, but I encourage you to read it slowly. This is one of the heaviest chapters because we are dealing with the death of Jesus. And so, uh, powerful, powerful stuff. It says this, that at noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried in a loud voice, saying, in essence, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, if you didn't listen to Fridays, definitely go listen to that. I unpack that statement. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it's not what you think it means probably. So anyway, go, go listen to Friday. But some, some that heard this standing there said he's calling on Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with wine vinegar and put it on a staff. They offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone, they said. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. But with a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. This is the key verse we're going to pick up from today. Then the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion guard who was standing there in front of Jesus, when he saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Powerful, powerful stuff. So again, last week we were talking about, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Today though, I want to lean into that, that, that key phrase in verse 38. The, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to to bottom. So if you know anything about Jewish history, you know that they had a temple and it had three sections to it. So the, the, they had the first part, which was called the outer court. That was where you could go and make sacrifice. Then there was an inner court, had some real special, very symbolic things going on in there. I wish I could, I should do a whole series on the tabernacle. It's fascinating. And then, but behind that, at that inside room, there was a curtain, and on the other side of that curtain was a special third layer called the Holy of Holies, which was where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that was where the high priest, and only the high priest, and only one time a year would go in and, um, and be in that Holy of Holy place. So think about this. Jesus dies, and the moment that he breathes his last breath, the Bible says that the curtain in the temple, now watch this, the curtain in the temple was probably around 60 feet high. That's a lot of curtain. And it was probably four inches thick. So unless you're one of those strong men that just tear phone booth with your hands or something like that, I mean, that's a hard thing to tear. And so clearly by the fact that it was 60 feet high and it was torn from the top part down, it was very symbolic because I know this was God that tore this thing open. It was Jesus saying, hey, we're done with this old model because there's something new breaking forth. And, and here's really what the writer of Hebrews go, goes on to talk about. And if you want to, if you really want to Bible study out, go read the book of Hebrews because he talks a lot about this idea. Watch this, Hebrews chapter 9, it says that the Holy Spirit was showing by this way um, into the most holy place that it had not been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still functioning. Basically, they were saying, hey, look, as long as that tabernacle still exists, people are going to think you got to do the old model, right? He goes, this is an illustration for the present time indicating that the gifts and sacrifices being offered were not able to clear the conscience of the worshiper. He was basically saying, hey, you know how we did the thing where we went and made the sacrifice and the high priest went behind the Holy of Holy and behind the curtain? He goes, that didn't work. Because if it worked, we well, wouldn't have to do it every single year, year after year after year after year. It's, it's not really what was going on. Watch, by chapter 10, he goes, Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. So the writer of Hebrews makes this like unbelievable metaphor to show you like, no, no, no. The way that you used to be able to get access to the presence of God was only through the high priest one time a year. He was like, no, no, the curtain has been torn. That old system didn't work anyway. It was just to, again, to try to help you clear your conscience. But now you can see that it was God who made the ultimate sacrifice. It was Jesus who is the high priest and the sacrifice who covered all of mankind's sins once and for all. Um, so just really, really powerful stuff here. What he was saying is this. Now you have total forgiveness. We don't have to come back every year and dump out our sin, but of course we should always be repentant. We should always be able to confess our sins and, and walk that out. But it was like in this formal way, he goes, no, no, you have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. And not only do you have total forgiveness, you know what you also have? Total access. Meaning it used to be that no one could get back there and have the presence of God. He goes, I want you to know that you have full access and you have full forgiveness. And so 
for you and I, Christ followers, it's so important that we recognize this and not take it for granted. You got to remember for thousands of years, these people thought, well, I can't get to God. I don't, I don't have that kind of access. And I don't even know that I'm fully forgiven unless I go make this sacrifice every single year, you know? And, and so Jesus is like, no, no, no. I, I want you to know that you have total forgiveness and you have total access. And my encouragement would be never take that for granted. This is why we show up on a Sunday morning to worship. This is why we take Holy Communion. This is why we, we come and honor God with our, uh, our, our worship and our gifts. And just, just to say, thank you, God. We don't want to take for granted that we have total access to your presence. I mean, can you imagine if somebody bought you a gift? Let's say you love Disneyland and your favorite place to go is Disneyland. If somebody bought you an all-access pass 24-7 year-round to go to Disneyland, and you used it twice a year. You know, you used it on Christmas and Easter, <laughs> you know, that kind of a thing. He'd be like, Dude, I bought you total access. I bought, I got you everything, and you use it once a year, maybe twice. Are you kidding me? No, you have total access to the presence of God. And so, Christ followers, let us always be mindful that, that we have access to the presence of God, that we can boldly come to the throne of grace. Can I get an amen to that, church? Guys, I love you so much. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow.